I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation shall be known to the ends of the earth. Good morning and welcome to Trinity Church here in Southport, Connecticut. It's my joy to worship with you as we celebrate morning prayer. And today is the last Sunday after the Epiphany, the last Sunday before the Lenten season, which begins this coming Wednesday on Ash Wednesday. Um, and by the way, it's World Mission Sunday as well, which the Episcopal Church celebrates at the end of Epiphany each year. And also, happy Valentine's Day. Welcome. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and, and to, to the, the Son, Son, and to, to the Holy Spirit. Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is God who said, let light shine out of darkness, darkness who has shown in our heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of Zion perfect in its beauty. God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let
Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause. For God himself is judge. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now. A reading of the Gospel of Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became a dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there, he appeared, and there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. They co then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, there were, when they looked around them, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The story in the gospel today is about four friends who go on a hike up a high mountain. It's a beautiful day for Peter, James, and John. They have Jesus all to themselves. And when they reach the top of the mountain, suddenly everything changes. Because Jesus stands before them and is transfigured before them, meaning he was totally changed. Suddenly, his body was bathed in light. His clothes were glowing, and they were dazzling. The, fr the three friends, Peter, James, and John, were so terrified that they didn't know what to do. Peter felt like he should build something there right away. Then, out of the sky, they heard the voice of God booming. This is my son. Listen to him. And then it was all over as suddenly as it had happened. What did it mean? The four of them left that place and they went down the mountain. Now today I have a picture to show you about this story. It's a special picture called an icon. Icons are meant to help us really understand what is happening. What is the meaning in this story? Do you notice in the, this picture of the transfiguration how there is sort of a star shape behind Jesus? That star shape is meant to show you how the light is coming forth from him. Because Jesus is so holy, so divine, that light bursts forth. If we had been there, we might have been blinded by this incredible experience, for this is a moment called transcendence. The word transcendence comes from trans, meaning to cross, and scandare, meaning to climb. And so in this moment, we can climb across from earth to heaven, from low to high, and we see, if only for a moment, how holy Jesus is. 
Now, do you see that star behind this, the circle behind the star shape? Do you see that circle? It's as though this circle connects us to heaven. The veil between heaven and earth has been removed. The veil that prevents us from seeing the light of Christ every day. It's gone. Jesus seems to come forth from the circle and at the same time, he draws us to himself and to these heavenly places that wait for us. Now we give this circle a special name. It's called the mandorla because it opens up something very holy to us, something we can't see in our everyday life because we're so human. The mandorla opens up the radiance of God. So of course, Peter, James, and John are at the bottom of the picture they bow down. The light is so bright, they can barely stand it. That love of God beaming on them is overwhelming. What is happening here is more than words can say. They bend their heads before the Lord. See how they are hunched over? And light seems to point down directly to each of them, the light of Christ. Today, I pray that the everlasting light of Christ shines on you. And who are these two people on either side of Jesus on the mountaintop? They are the greatest prophets of the Hebrew scripture, Moses and Elijah. And if these two great prophets acknowledge Christ, can there be any doubt that we should too? This icon this ancient Russian icon shows how human we are, how low to the earth, and how holy and high our beloved Jesus is. And yet high though he may be, he still connects with us. He's still with us. He shines on us if only we would listen to him. And suddenly when it's all over that one brief shining moment, the disciples go back down the mountain with Jesus, back to the daily life of fishing and working, but they will never forget this wondrous vision. When something unbelievable happens to you, how do you bring it into your daily life? How do you make your life reflect the light and the love that you have known? That's what we're going to start thinking about this week. With, when Ash Wednesday comes and Lent begins, we'll ask the question, why did Jesus allow Peter, James, and John to see him shining like the sun? And the answer is so that when they would later see him crucified, they would understand that his suffering was voluntary, so that they would understand that Jesus gave his life of his own free will for us. I'll take the picture down from the screen now. We who are so blessed to know this loving, life-giving Son of God, how are we living out our daily lives? We have to let the light of Christ shine through us. There was a young mother whose career as a trader was on the rise, but then the pandemic came. Suddenly she had to set aside her work aspirations and become a stay-at-home teacher for her kids. She never thought of herself as a teacher. She'd never done it before, but she was capable. It certainly wasn't what she had planned. It reminded her of what President Eisenhower once said, plans are worthless. But planning is everything. Things became even more challenging for this young mom. Her father became ill with a virus. And so she set up a special corner of the house just for him to come and live with them, keeping the whole family safe with constant cleaning, with keeping strict boundaries. And then to top it off, her husband lost his job and neither of them were working for a while. The daily scramble to keep up with everything was exhausting for this woman. But this intrepid mom figured out a couple of ways to cope. She called her own mother once a week for support. And she set up 
a group of fellow parents who could commiserate together and, and keep each other going. And she found that if she set aside a time in the morning before her whole household woke up, early in the morning, even if it were only for 20 minutes, she could take this time to be still and to pray to the God who is our source of light and life and ask God for strength for a new day. This early morning time became her favorite part of the day. Now today on this Valentine's Day, as we think about the nature of love, we remember that true love is not self-serving. Real love, true love gives and gives and sacrifices the self on behalf of others. We're not called to have power over others, but to rise up as dust that has been formed by the breath of God and give life to others, especially those who are neglected by the powerful. As you go out into this new season of Lent this coming week, and you receive those ashes on your head on Wednesday, and you remember your deep humanity. Let it be your desire to cross over into more light and to climb higher in your words and deed, to transcend the daily grind, remembering the transfiguration of our Lord. Let your light shine and do good works that glorify our loving and life-giving God. And the light of Christ will draw near to you and sustain you as we traverse these 40 days of Lent to cross over into Good Friday and reach the early dawn of Easter Day. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will will be done, done on on earth earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as as we we forgive forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God of light and life, our prayers rise before you on this day in hope and faith. We pray for your church, for the Episcopal Church in Connecticut, for our bishops, Ian and Laura, our clergy, and all the people. We pray for churches around the world on this World Mission Sunday. Oh. Flame of abundant love, Be our joy in proclaiming your good news to the world. We pray for all who are coming to faith, all who wonder about faith, and all who are struggling with faith. Light of all creation, guide us to lead, teach, and nurture your disciples. We pray for those in need of food, shelter, clothing, and God's healing touch especially those for whom our prayers are desired. On Trinity's prayer prayer list, we pray for Jill, Bobby Ashcroft, Stephen Shi, Patria Swan, Peter Swan, Joyce Miller, Robert, Lillian, Lee, Whitney, Janet, John Rogers, Philip, and anyone else you would like to name at this time. David. We pray for all those who have died, remembering especially Hobart Gardner, Nick Tierney, Donald Cole, Robert Goldshaw, Kevin Kukzo, and all those who have died of the coronavirus. Comforter of the suffering, Warm Warm our our hands hands to loving loving service. We pray for the world, especially where there is trouble and suffering, far away or nearby, especially those places we name now. We pray for the country of Cameroon in the midst of its civil war. We pray for the Anglican School of the Good Shepherd. Ember of steadfast care, fuel our passion to challenge injustice and violence and to pursue peace and reconciliation. We pray for the land on which we stand, for the Pequot people who were and are caretakers of this land, for the people, creatures, plant life, and waters around us, and for those things now named. We give thanks for open space, for affordable housing. Pray for our neighbors here in Southport and in the wider community. Pray for neighborly relations. 
Star, blaze of glory, lead us, lead us to, to care, care for this fragile earth, earth our, our island home, and to, and to heal, heal the, the circle of creation. God of radiant light, your love illuminates our hope before we know them, and our needs before we ask. Kindle your flame within us, that in our prayers and service, we may know your transforming presence at work in the world around us. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have, you have given, given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting amen let us humbly confess our sins unto almighty god saying together most merciful god we confess that we have sinned against you in thought word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone we, we have, have not, not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have not, not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We, we are truly sorry and we humbly, humbly repent. For the, For the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we that may delight, delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. Peace to you in the balcony. Peace, everyone. Peace to all those who are watching at home, our beloved friends, our neighbors, our maybe friends far away. We're so happy that you joined us today. Please be seated for a few announcements. Good morning, everyone. My name is Rob Lawton. I'm the Associate for Youth and Family Ministries here at Trinity Southport. And wherever you may be joining us from this morning, we are so glad to have you here. I want to thank our acolytes and readers this morning, MJ, Leslie, and Harrison Owens, uh, who are members of our youth groups and have been really active uh, here in everything we do for a long, long time. So thanks to all of you for, for what you did for us this morning. I also want to thank our musicians this morning, our cellist Madeline O'Neill, who's a freshman at Staples High School, and Claire Bullman, our singer, who has been a longtime member of the music program here at Trinity. Thank you for all your gifts and for sharing them with us. Uh, all the announcements can be found on pages 6, 7, 8, and 9 of your bulletin, and I'm just going to highlight a couple of things for us. Immediately after the 11 a.m. or the 10 a.m. service this morning, at 11 a.m., we'll be having a Zoom coffee hour where you can join myself, Reverend Peggy, and Robert Kwan uh, just for a time of fellowship. So the information for that can be found on page six of the bulletin and also on our Facebook page. So I hope you'll grab your favorite uh, mug of a warm beverage and join us for that. Tuesday is Shrove Tuesday, also known as Pancake Tuesday. And unfortunately, we can't gather in the parish hall for our normal pancake supper 
but I'd like to invite everyone to join us for a Zoom pancake supper. We'll make some pancakes together. Uh, I've included a recipe that can be found uh, in the bulletin on page eight, or you can use a mix, whatever is easiest for you. And we'll uh, talk through making pancakes together and then just have some fellowship time over dinner together. So that starts at 5.30 on Tuesday over Zoom. And the information for that's on page six. Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, and we'll be having a number of outdoor services for anyone who would care to join us. Those will be at 7.30 a.m., 8.30 a.m., 12 noon, and 5.30 p.m., and those will be all just outside the main doors of the church right on Pequot Avenue. And then for folks who want to participate in the Ash Wednesday service but can't get here, uh, we'll be broadcasting a service on Facebook and YouTube at 7.30 p.m. So lots of ways to participate in the Ash Wednesday liturgy. Over the month of March on Thursday evenings, myself, Reverend Peggy, uh, Dr. Harry Schmitz, and the Reverend Dr. Gary Gelfenbein will be presenting a series of talks on uh, the energy of the cross, uh, spanning from the last seven words that Jesus spoke from the cross, as well as different artistic depictions of the cross and what that might teach us in this Lenten season. So I hope you'll be able to join us for those. Those will be on Thursdays in March at 6 p.m. Uh, over Zoom, and we'll have a link for you soon. For anyone who may be feeling that the ongoing uh, pandemic is causing uh, a level of anxiety, there is going to be a, a day for lay people uh, offered by the Episcopal Church in Connecticut on Saturday, February 27th, from 9.30 in the morning to 2.30 p.m., and that'll be over Zoom, and uh, we'll be joined by uh, Dr. David Olson, who will be uh, just telling us about some of the ways that humans react to anxiety and stress, and some of the ways we can cope with that. The event is free of charge, but it does require a pre-registration, and information about that can be found on page seven of the bulletin. The last thing I'll say is that uh, starting next Sunday, the first Sunday in Lent, uh, in addition to our regular Children Time videos at 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings, Robert Kwan and I will be offering uh, an, a live Zoom Sunday school class at 9 a.m. Uh, if you're already on my family mailing list, then you've gotten that information already, but if you're not and you would like to be included, please just send me an email, associate at trinitysouthport.org, and I'll be happy to uh, send you all the information about that. Thank you again, and good morning. Thank you, Rob Lawton. This is Black History Month, as you know, and yesterday was the celebration uh, on the church calendar of Absalom Jones, the first African-American priest, the first black priest in the Episcopal Church. The Episcopal Church has an Absalom Jones offering that has been established to support, to support historically black church, uh, colleges and universities, HBCUs. And so congregations and individuals are urged to dedicate uh, an offering to observe the Feast of Absalom Jones and help these colleges and universities. Trinity is seeking candidates for school director and associate rector. If you know some exceptional candidates in the educational or clergy world, um, you might think about what churches you've belonged to in the past or where your home church is and, and think about who might be a great candidate. Um, today is uh, Valentine's Day, and I wish all of you a very happy Valentine's Day. It's a wonderful youth and family Sunday, and I, I add my thanks to the Owenses for being here today. Um, it's World Mission Sunday as well, which is always the last Sunday of Epiphany, uh, established by the Episcopal Church for us to remember the poor around the globe, uh, and remember how wealthy we are and that we're called to share some of our blessings with others. On that note, we are offering this coming, um, let's see, Thursday, the 25th, a week from Thursday night, our second in a series on world mission, the Reverend Canon Elizabeth Geitz, who founded this, the Academy of the Good Shepherd in Bafut, Cameroon, uh, will be talking about this wonderful school and Sister Jane Manka, who is the amazing nun who helped her found it. 
it's a fabulous story. Uh, Elizabeth wrote a book called I Am That Child, and she's written several other books as well, so it's go going to prove to be a fascinating evening. I hope you can join us February 25th. Other announcements are in your leaflet. Um, at this time in our service, we remember our own offering, um, and we say this offertory sentence. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Give offerings and come into his courts with praise.
receive the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Amen.